What is going on guys? It is Steven, your semi-comprehensive reviewer here, and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing something that has been recommended to me by friends, viewers, and through a lot of Instagram and TikTok ads, and that is the Backbone One handheld gaming controller. This controller essentially turns your phone into a Switch or Steam Deck, and I absolutely loved using this guy out of the box, and this easily has to be one of the best concepts I've reviewed on this channel. But let me tell you, I've never used a product that took a faster 180 than the Backbone did. From the price to strange design choices to Backbone just straight up scamming people, but we'll get into that. For now, let's jump right into it and start with the unboxing. Taking the Backbone out of the box, we have the Backbone itself, some paperwork, as well as some different attachments attachments for different sized phones and cases. The Backbone One released on October 27th, 2020. However, the PlayStation Edition I'm going to be reviewing in this video came out in May of this year. They are exactly the same, except the button layout on the PlayStation Edition matches that of the PlayStation 5, and the regular Backbone is more of a generic Xbox button layout. Both editions come in USB-C and Lightning versions, so you can basically use them with any modern smartphone. All editions come in at a pretty hefty price tag of $99. More on that later. Now, the PlayStation edition of the Backbone is marketed as being one of the best ways to play PlayStation Remote Play. This is mainly a review of the controller itself, but as part of this review, I will be covering a little bit of PlayStation Remote Play and how it performs as well. After you've taken it out of the box, setting up the Backbone is fairly simple. If anything, the hardest part is putting your phone in for the first time. Although the instructions give a pretty clear guide on how to put your phone in, I feel like it would be easier if there was like a locking mechanism that would hold the Backbone open while you put your phone in. This would actually be especially useful for taking the phone out, as I still have not found an easy or elegant solution to do that yet. After connecting your phone, you'll be prompted to download the Backbone app, which honestly doesn't do much besides allow you to take screenshots and then ask to spam you with a bunch of emails and notifications. We are also offered Backbone Plus during the setup, and let's just say we'll talk more about that later. Just know it's not necessary to use the Backbone for now. You also don't even need the app to use the Backbone, so my recommendation would be to just uninstall it after you're done setting it up. Alright, let's talk about the design, and there's a lot to like, and there's also some stuff to not like. First off, I think Backbone did a really good job of designing their controller, although it's definitely not a PlayStation 5 controller. Visually, it looks like a PlayStation 5 controller, and it will match all of your other PlayStation 5 accessories, but if you look more closely and actually use the controller, you will notice the difference. Starting with the layout, the thumbsticks are offset, more like an Xbox controller layout. Uh, the D-pad is different from that of the DualSense, and the share and option buttons are below all these other buttons instead of being above them, like on the DualSense controller. Also, there's no PlayStation button. We get a Backbone button, which I thought would act like a PlayStation button in Remote Play, but it just opens up the Backbone app, which, uh, like I said, doesn't really do anything. Using the controller also feels different. Uh, the buttons are more clicky, and the triggers are softer than those on the DualSense. Now, did any of this matter to me while I was using the Backbone? No. But for the PlayStation purists out there, they may be disappointed that this doesn't look and feel exactly like a PlayStation controller. Now, although it doesn't feel like a PlayStation 5 controller, it still feels high quality. It's hefty without feeling too heavy, and that's mainly because there's no batteries in the controller. It's all powered by your phone itself, which you think would drain the battery a lot faster, but in my experience, you really don't notice it that much. I mean, if you're already gaming with your phone at high brightness, the battery's gonna drain fast anyway, and luckily the Backbone doesn't really contribute too much to battery drain while gaming. Now, just taking a step back and looking at the overall Backbone experience, it is honestly worth all the hype. Like, using your phone like this instead of using the touchscreen or even using a wireless controller feels way more natural and easy to use. I found myself actually enjoying mobile versions of games like COD and Madden. Another thing you may be wondering is how well different phone sizes and different phone cases fit into the backbone. And as you can see, I have a pretty decently sized phone case on my phone right now, and it fits into the backbone just fine. Um, with a case on, I did experience a few connection issues, but it was mainly because I just didn't install it correctly. And with no case on the phone, I had zero issues at all. Now, if you own a PlayStation 5 and don't want to pay $100 for a better remote play experience, you could literally just connect your DualSense controller to your phone. You can connect using a wire or a Bluetooth connection, and it works on Android and iPhone. You can even get mounts for the DualSense that hold your phone for like 15 bucks. But you will still need to charge your controller and make sure it's powered on when you're using it with your phone. And personally, I like the feel of the backbone compared to just your phone strapped to a controller. Also, the backbone is more portable than a full-size controller, and when it's disconnected like this, you can actually connect it using a USB-C cable to your PC, iPad, or Mac, 
and use that just like a regular external controller. This is actually what convinced me to get this controller because I love the idea of having a smaller travel controller that I could use for my phone as well as for my PC on the go. And I think Backbone thinks this too because they gave me a lot of ads with this feature being shown off. They show you being able to just plug in your Backbone into your PC and having it immediately connect and being able to use it just like a regular controller. So when my Backbone arrived, one of the first things I did after I set it up and used it with my phone was to connect it to my gaming PC. Sure, this looks a little weird without a phone in the middle, but you're not doing anything with that space anyway. So I went ahead, plugged in my Backbone to my PC and tried to navigate through Rocket League and nothing. I thought that was a little bit weird, so I tried a different cable and I got the same issue. So now I'm thinking, well, maybe there's a driver or software needed to get this to work. So I went back to Backbone's website and that's when I came across this. A full breakdown of all of the features of the Backbone 1 and that Backbone Plus membership I mentioned earlier. And listed here under the exclusive Backbone Plus features was the ability to use your Backbone with other devices. Basically meaning you need a membership in order to use the Backbone with your PC. Uh, what? Was I just blind and just didn't see this anywhere? So I went back to Instagram and looked at those ads I saw advertising that feature. And I looked more closely, and sure enough, there was nothing saying that you needed a Backbone Plus membership to use this controller on your PC. Nothing in the video, nothing in the description, nothing in the comments. One of the best features of Backbone 1 is play on any screen. Just use a lightning cable to connect it to your PC, iPad, Mac, and even Android phone to play however and wherever you want. I mean, this is just misleading at best, false advertising at worst. And it was at this point I looked a little more closely at Backbone Plus and some of the other features listed. And by that, I mean I got Backbone Plus like the sucker I am. First, we're shown this game launcher everywhere on packaging and on Backbone's website, and it usually just says it's the Backbone app. But I didn't get this launcher with my app at all. My app just opened to a blank screen or to a notification agreement until I subscribed to Backbone Plus, And now all of my games from PlayStation Remote Play, Xbox Cloud, and locally on my phone are all organized in this beautiful and easy to navigate game launcher. You know how I complain about not having a PlayStation button? Well, guess what? Now that I have Backbone Plus, I can now use the Backbone button as the PlayStation button in Remote Play, and life is so much easier. Backbone has literally made a PlayStation 5 controller, taken away features that normally come with a PlayStation 5 controller, and is charging people to get them back. That would be like making a car with turn signals that could only be used if you paid a monthly subscription. Sure, you can still drive the car and use hand signals to turn, but it definitely isn't the same experience. So you may be wondering to yourself, well, what else does Backbone Plus get you besides unlocking a feature you should have gotten included with the controller? Well, Backbone Plus also gives you more social features, voice chat, better recording quality for gameplay clips, and some free trials to Xbox Game Pass and Apple Arcade, all for $40 a year, which comes out to around $3.30 a month. So essentially, I paid $99 for a controller that doesn't have all the features advertised, and then I'm expected to pay $40 a year to unlock those features and get some extra party favors included. And it's bad enough that this is even a thing. It's bad enough that I paid more for this than I would have for a brand new DualSense and a phone mount. It's bad enough that I have to pay monthly to unlock a feature that should have come with the controller. But what really gets me, what really sours this product for me is the fact that there is no mention of this being a thing on Backbone's main product page or on their own advertisements showing off this feature. For most consumers who buy this without doing extensive research, they will assume that the feature advertised comes included. I try and do research before I buy a product and I didn't even see this. And I am fine with a subscription or a monthly pass if your original product is cheap or free or if it adds additional features that aren't necessary for the core function of the product. For example, the custom game launcher is totally fine in a subscription because it's not needed to use the controller. It's basically just a cherry on top. But if one of the core functions of your product is locked behind a monthly subscription and you're advertising that feature without disclosing that, you're just misleading people. Now, can you still use the backbone without paying? Yes. You can game on your phone and stream remote play and never even consider plugging your backbone into a PC or Mac, and you can still touch the screen to bring up the PlayStation button during remote play. I will also mention that you do get a free year of Backbone Plus with the controller, so you're not paying anything right away. But the fact remains that you will be paying eventually on top of the $99 this controller costs. I mean, the phone on a controller doesn't seem too bad now, honestly. Assuming you don't already have a PlayStation 5 controller, you could buy a brand new DualSense. It could be the standard colors or the more expensive new metallic colors, and a phone mount, and get it for less than the backbone. Oh yeah, and you can connect that DualSense wired or wirelessly to your gaming PC, to your iPhone, to your friend's Android phone, to your iPad, to your grandma's iMac, all without paying a penny more. Don't get me wrong, I prefer this over this, 
but if I have to pay significantly more and I have to pay monthly for this, I'm gonna go with this. I think most of this misinformation is a result of Backbone's social media team being clueless more than anything else. I mean, there are multiple reels on their Instagram account that show them just installing phones incorrectly into the Backbone. Literally incorrectly according to the instructions that are in the box with the Backbone. And all the videos that feature the Backbone were posted a while ago. It seems like right now they're mainly just posting average gamer memes. And while it's still Backbone's fault that they have this ridiculous feature in place, it seems like it's the fault of both the social media team for not disclosing it and Backbone for having the stupid thing in the first place. All right, so things have been pretty bad so far. So maybe PlayStation Remote Play will redeem the Backbone and make it a product worth purchasing. And it doesn't. I mean, I really want to like cloud gaming. I mean, the idea of being able to take your phone with you anywhere and stream any game from your PlayStation 5 just sounds amazing. But then you consider poor internet. Have you ever been to a hotel? I'm talking like an averagely priced hotel, like a Comfort Inn, and gotten exceptional Wi-Fi connection speeds. And I'm not talking can load a website or your For You page kind of speeds. I'm talking can stream 1080p movies or YouTube videos at high quality kind of speeds. This kind of internet is few and far between, and if you got speeds like that, you probably had to pay more for it. I mean, the same thing applies anywhere else. Starbucks, McDonald's, the school library. Wi-Fi is everywhere, it's just not good Wi-Fi. I mean, it'll load websites and it'll get the job done, but you're not gonna be able to stream Fortnite in a Burger King bathroom. Okay, so let's say you just wanna use remote play at home. You're in the next room for your console. You don't wanna get up. Maybe you're a parent who's watching their kid in the next room and they wanna play Mortal Kombat at the same time. Maybe you're cozy in your bed and you don't wanna get up all the way into the cold and play your console on the couch. Well, for those kind of people, remote play is fine. PlayStation recommends having at least 15 megabits download speeds in order to have a high quality stream from your PlayStation 5. And just for context, I pay for around 500 megabits per second internet, but I usually get around 300 megabits per second because I'm in a densely populated area. I also have a top of the line Wi-Fi gaming router that gives me amazing speeds in all other games I play. And yet I still got frame drops and stuttering and lag spikes. And the experience was even worse when I tried to play online while remote playing. I mean, I just got even more stuttering and quality drops and it was almost unplayable at times. So I mainly stuck to local single player games and I could honestly play for close to an hour at a time without any stuttering, any frame drops or quality drops and then all of a sudden I'd get a bunch in a row and it would completely ruin my experience. Typically those drops would happen when I was in the middle of some kind of action or a lot of stuff was happening on screen which made it even more annoying and then it would just go back to normal right after that and it would be fine for another 20-30 minutes. And although that was really annoying, I mean it was tolerable to play through. Now I will say the actual picture quality you get is usually pretty good um, when it's not dropping and stuttering and I mean you really don't need to stream a super high quality image for a phone screen but it still looks good here. One thing that does bother me about the image are the black bars on either sides. I mean I get most games have information along the top or bottom that would get cut off if you zoom to fill um, but I would appreciate it if they at least gave us that option because this kind of bothers me having a screen this small and if there's a cutscene in the game you're in then it makes it even smaller because you have black bars on the side. So for those gamers who choose to play Call of Duty on their phone, this controller is actually a pretty big game changer. The backbone feels so much better when you don't have to deal with lag spikes and stuttering like you do with remote play. For local games with almost zero latency, it feels so much better to use a controller compared to touch controls or gyro controls. Ah, but once again, our old enemy, the DualSense comes in because once again, you could buy a DualSense and a phone mount and use that instead of the backbone for cheaper. Now the argument isn't as strong if you're just using the controller for mobile games. I still think the feel of the backbone is better than a controller with a phone strapped to it. But once again, you can save a few bucks with the DualSense method and then you have a free controller you can do whatever you want with. I mean, I love the backbone out of the box. The design, the build, being able to have a proper gaming experience on your phone was all amazing. But I was sadly blinded by a concept that was too good to be true. The Remote Play cloud gaming experience is just not there yet, and PlayStation Remote Play has a long way to go before it becomes a practical option for gaming on the go. But aside from Remote Play being bad, there are things directly in Backbone's control that should be fixed to make this a better product. Why are we charging $99 for a product that can do less than a standard console controller? Why are we missing important buttons that make the experience better? And why are we misleading buyers into getting a product that doesn't do everything it's advertised doing? The only audience that may get some use out of this are people who game exclusively on their phone, and once again, even then, there are better options out there. So if you've seen an ad for the Backbone in your feed, just ignore it and go with an option you probably already have.
Anyways, if you have a backbone, I'd love to hear your experience with it, if you enjoy using it or if you're as frustrated as I am with it. And if you don't already have a backbone and I convinced you somehow to get one, let me know how that is. I'd love to hear from some people who regularly use their backbone and actually enjoy it. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like down below. And if you love my content, be sure to subscribe. Other than that, I've been Steven, your semi-comprehensive reviewer, and be sure to have a wonderful rest of your day.